On this episode, we talk about Consumer Reports' top picks for 2016. We also talk about changes to our ratings next on Talking Cars. Hi there, and welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Jake Fisher. I'm Gabe Shenhar. It's that time of the year again. It's time for our April auto issue. That means we have a lot of new content online. One of the biggest news events of the year is we come out with our top picks list. But there's also something new that we have this year. We have a new way of rating and scoring cars, don't we, Jake? We do. We do. So it used to be when you look at the ratings, you would rate them by the road test score. So we put them through 50 tests and all types of tests, right? Performance and comfort and everything we do on the track, safety. Um, what we're doing now is we're introducing this new overall score. So what we're doing is we're combining that road test with other really important things when you go buy a car, say reliability, which people tend to A lot come, of people care about. Yeah, especially people coming to us are finding about reliability. Sure. We're also looking at to we're also looking at safety, not just the safety stuff we tested on the track, but also um, what about uh, forward collision uh, mitigation stuff? I mean that stuff, forward collision uh, um, warning, um, automatic braking, if this stuff is standard, we're giving it points for, for that. We're also looking at crash tests. If there's bad crash tests, we're going to be removing points for that. And we're also even looking at owner satisfaction. So this is data that we compile from our subscribers. Um, do they really love the car? Do they really hate the car? That's going to go in there too. So we take that all together and we create this new overall score, which really makes a lot of sense in terms of what are really the best cars and what are the worst cars, taking it all together. Right, we really wanted to create a sort of one-stop shopping place that you can go that puts all the information together in one number because a lot of these other factors you know, were significant to, to buyers of cars. You, you have the road test score, you have owner satisfaction, you have reliability, you have safety. Like for example, owner satisfaction. We were seeing that for some, some luxury cars, even some popular cars. Owner satisfaction was low. and. Right. So you should take that into account. Exactly. I mean, we're leveraging everything we know about the car. You know, we're baking in into one integral score, which is a weighted composite, and it's very customer centric. It's it's going to help a lot of people buy a car without really getting a having to get a PhD in how to uh, <laughs> decipher things. Right, and I mean, we, we give the information, you know, if, if you want to still buy a car by road test score, you can go buy a car by road test score. But there are some big effects here, like the Mercedes C-Class. When we tested the C-Class, we loved driving that car. It scored really well, but its reliability is is poor. Right, exactly. So that puts it, you know, lower within its category. Sure, sure. Because for buyers, they want to incorporate all these pieces together. Yep. Yeah, and like even a, a vehicle like the Tesla Model S, you know, um, giving it a close to perfect score, a perfect score, when there's obviously reliability issues with that, we're ranking it by, again, all these different factors, and you know, there's there's luxury vehicles that are above it. Mm -hmm. And let me just uh, elaborate on the owner satisfaction here. It's basically a very simple question. We ask, would you buy that car again? And we rank that according to how many people say they would buy the car again. And that has value. I mean, you're, if, if your peers like this car, there is something to that. And likewise, if they don't like it, you probably don't want to send people to buy that car. Right, mm -hmm. because another example that stands out is uh, the Chevy Corvette. The Corvette is one of the least reliable cars in our survey. But it has, I believe, one of the highest owner satisfaction Correct. in the survey. So. You know, we, we want to give those pieces of information, and it's worth some credit. To, I mean, yeah, you take away from the Corvette because its reliability is not great, but it's worth something that owners love it so much. Yep. Um, now, the adding reliability into this adds a few complications, because what if the car is a new design? What do we do then? Right, and this, this is really what, what we did was what we made some changes which enabled us to do this. So, I mean, to be honest, I mean, we realized, you know, for, we understand reliability is a real big issue when you're buying a car. I mean, that is very important. But it's absolutely true. When a car hits the market, the brand new redesign, it's been our, uh, the way we deal with these things is we're not going to make predictions on that brand new car because we don't have any data from that car. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we made a change. And what we did was we looked at the brand history. So let me give you an example. Range Rover and Jaguar. Mm -hmm. We used to talk a lot about Range Rover and Jaguar and say, well, they're unreliable models. If you look at lately, we haven't 
made a lot of judgments on those because we haven't had enough data on any particular Jaguar and any particular Range Rover to make that judgment. Not enough sample size to have the minimum sample size of 100 cars per model. Exactly, thank you Gabe. And, and, and there's probably other places you could go and you could go to a forum on Range Rovers and, and there's like three guys that had some problem. And we were, we're dealing with you know, a lot of vehicles before we make that judgment. But what we did was we actually took all the Range Rovers mm -hmm. together all the, the, the Jaguars and put them together. And we actually have quite a bit of sample size at the brand level. Mm -hmm. So we're actually, actually have to make, we can make judgments at that brand level. Right, so we're leveraging the information that we do have. Exactly, so if you look at all of the information that we do have, we can make these judgments about these cars. And again, if you have you know, Mazda, who has been just hitting it out of the park, coming up with new models that are reliable, they come up with a new Mazda, like one that's behind that's us. That's right. I mean, I don't think there's ever been a time where the Miata has not been reliable, mm -hmm. or Mazda has introduced a new vehicle with a lot of these things where they haven't had problems. So, so again, I've gotten to the chase, right. you know, for people who notice what's behind <laughs> me. <laughs> the Miata may be a top, is a top pick. Let's the not Miata even be is a top pick. It's a top pick, yeah. You're exa exactly right. On a brand new car that we, you know, that we are predicting reliability on based on brand history. About, based on brand history and, and you know, there's a lot of things that are in common with other models that we know they don't have problems mm -hmm. with these, the, the powertrain, it, right. is, yeah, yeah, we yeah, can I mean, recommend it. I mean, you can make, we can make judgments based on brand history, you can make judgments based on engineering judgments of a shared component tree. You know, right. That, I mean, the Miata, like you said, the Miata's got an engine that's shared with, with other Mazdas, it's got an infotainment system shared with other Mazdas, so. Right, and th this There's is sound advice know. that you'd give your neighbors and your family members, and now we're making it uh, official and we're, we're just using it. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. what, what this means, though, is especially for the people out there who you know, are, are super fans who keep track of where cars score, this stuff is dynamic now. It is massively dynamic because it's going to depend on reliability, mm -hmm. depends on owner set, depends on crash test results. Yes. If, mm -hmm. if something does poorly in IHS offset and then it gets retested, that's going to go and change the score. Mm -hmm. if, if we hope more manufacturers do this, if forward collision warning and auto braking becomes standard, Correct. that's going to mm -hmm. change the score. So scores will change a yeah. lot more now than they have before. Yes. There, yeah, there, there's going to be some reshuffling uh, within the, the ranking of cars within a category based on these things because it's it, things change. Right, and we've seen reshuffling within categories when it comes to top picks. That some cars that were top picks in previous years weren't top picks now. So let's go into the top picks list. Um, first off, in subcompact, we have the Honda Fit. Yeah, so uh, we, we had that category uh, in years past. Uh, we kind of like uh, um, stopped it for a while. Uh, but yeah, the Honda Fit is uh, is a really a uh, space wonder. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. for such a small footprint. It's an amazing. It's a TARDIS. It's it's, it's it's complete. It's so versatile. It's so uh, useful. I mean, the car has a, such a cult of uh, followers. It mm -hmm. gets great fuel fuel economy. It uh, handles uh, kind of well. It uh, it's fun to drive, and uh, it just may not be uh, exactly the right fit for you if you take oh, it on a long okay. trip. But uh, yeah, as a <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, no the delay was intended. appropriate. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> really. So sure, <laughs> sure, it wasn't. My, my, you know, it's funny. My my dad actually has a first generation fit, mm. and stick shift. It's orange. It's a mm. bit sport and stuff like that. And my mom, and my dad's like he's like seventy. You know, mm. he's driving the stick shift fit around. And my mom's like, you know, don't make me drive in that car. I mean, he loves it. Yeah. It's fun. It's sporty. It's lots of room. But it's like for a long trip. Yeah, it's. Not the best. Yeah. Oh, uh, you, you yeah. can buy other cars. For yeah. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, moving up the class, um, we have a Subaru Impreza as our compact pick. The Impreza does an awful lot right. Yeah, very impressive. I'm gonna throw <laughs> it right back at you. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is gonna. Can we cut this? <laughs> okay. I, it will All stop right, so. soon. <laughs> no. What's, what is impressive, honestly, about the Impreza, is that it does it with, and I'm going to throw it, say, the penalty of all-wheel drive, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, they talk about the safety of all-wheel drive. We put lots of content showing that all-wheel drive doesn't make you safe. It's a nice feature if you live somewhere where it's snowy, it gets you, gets you going. But generally, when you put an all-wheel drive system in a car, you know, you're up in the price, you're up in the weight, you could hurt fuel economy, mm -hmm. you could hurt acceleration. But we're not giving it extra points for having no, for, for all-wheel drive. But even with that, 
It is such a nicely engineered car that mm -hmm. drives nice, that's quiet, that has the fuel efficiency, it has the acceleration, has the yep. performance. Yep, the controls are simple now. It's finally gotten modern infotainment. You can get eyesight, uh, you, so yeah. you, can get, you can get, which is kind of impressive, you know, for, oh, I'm so, so <laughs> you know, I fell into that trap. Um, so, you know, for right around $25,000, you're getting a car with yeah. all the modern safety gear. Sure. And crash test results are great. Yeah, so. it's a compact sedan that feels kind of grown up -y. It's a yeah. roomy car. Yeah. There's a lot of space there. Mm -hmm. If you do need more room, uh, here's a car I dare you to make a pun with, uh, the Toyota Camry. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Nice, good. Um, <laughs> the Camry is one of those places where cars, where we had a switch, because we had the Subaru Legacy as a previous topic, and now it's the Camry. The thing is, the Camry is just reliable as the sun coming up. Yeah, it's bulletproof reliability. It's a really well-rounded car. It's so um, it's very uh, pleasant in, in in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, it drives uh, better than, than most people tend to. It think. drives better in its reputation. Yes. Yeah, and I think that's really important. Yeah, so, I yeah. mean, it, the handling is responsible, and now it's very secure. It's uh, the ride's comfortable. The, the, the cabin's quiet. Uh, it has a roomy rear seat. I mean, there's hardly. Uh, there's nowhere that it falls down, pretty much. No, there isn't. I mean, there are cars that are more exciting. You could get a Fusion, you can you can sure. get a Ford Fusion, you can get a Mazda 6. Uh, I mean, it's hard to buy, we, we talked about this on a previous episode, it's hard to buy a bad mid-sized sedan, but... There's a lot of good ones, but but look, I mean, if you if you want to keep the thing and have it, you know, run for 250,000 miles, mm -hmm. yeah, they'd be pretty good safe bet getting the Camry. Yep, and it, the Camry also has a really wide lineup because it has a terrific hybrid model, mm -hmm. has a terrific V6 that doesn't even sure. have much fuel economy. Right. Um, shortcoming. And an SE, which makes it pseudo oh, sporty. Slightly, it, it gives it, spo <laughs> it puts spoilers on it, basically. <laughs> uh, large car, uh, this is a carryover, the uh, Chevy Impala, which is a very, very nice car. It, it still is, you know, and I know when we originally rated it and everyone's like, wow, is it really that good? Mm -hmm. I think there's more people actually got into it now and are like, yeah, it really is that good. I mean, right. this is a, it's got a Chevy Impala badge on it, like that old rental car used to be, but I mean, you know, it is basically a luxury car. It, it is, is a bargain luxury car. Yeah. 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 I mean, you'd, you'd be surprised how it delivers on what really matters. There was a ride comfort. Quiet cabin, uh, nice infotainment system, it's easy to use. No, I mean, we were just talking, we just did a ratings meeting on the new Toyota Avalon, you know, with its retuned ride, and the Impala still, it outrides it still it. wipes the floor with it when yep. it comes to ride and handling. It's just mm -hmm. a really, and quietness, it's just a really well done car. Right. Uh, you know, another really well done car is uh, for small SUV, the Subaru Forester. It just doesn't get more practical than that. Yeah, it really stands out from the crowd. I mean, there's a lot of lot of small SUVs, right? Um, this one, it's just it's very practical. You can actually see out of it really mm -hmm. nicely, which yeah. is kind of going out of style. Yeah. Um, small SUVs are, are usually have small rear windows. And right. Exactly. Yeah. This has got not lots of glass area around. I mean, you, you notice it right when you you drive that vehicle, but but it rides nice. It's quiet. It's got decent steering feel. It does. It it really. It's very enjoyable to, to drive and, and it's been reliable. Roomy and fuel efficient doesn't hurt either. And recently it got the, the better infotainment system that uh, the rest of the Subaru line got. So that's all the all better. And once again, terrific crash test results, available eyesight, right. uh, yep. forward collision mm -hmm. warning and auto braking. So yeah, there's a lot going on. Everybody for that it. owns it, loves it. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, something new to list this year is uh, the SUV parked behind us, the Kia Sorento. Mm -hmm. You know, I find that oftentimes we have cars and we test them and, and then they, they, they sit, you know, we keep cars for a couple months after we test them. And sometimes I'll go back to a car and be like, oh, yeah, you know, and, and this wasn't as good as I remember. I go back to the Sorento and every time I'm impressed. I'm like, this is a nice car. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting because, you know, it's, it, it's another situation where Kia came after Hyundai, right? Mm -hmm. So there was the Hyundai Santa Fe. And then Kia does theirs, and they make it. They one up it a little bit better. Right. And as another example, it's 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 better than Santa Fe. It it just edges out the Highlander. Yeah, Highlander's a good choice. Too. It sure is. But um, but yeah, it, it does a lot of things right. It, it it's nice to drive. The infotainment system is very simple. It's roomy. It's nicely finished. Um, yeah, and it's quiet and it's solid. It, yeah. it feels very substantial and mm -hmm. good seats and a really nice car. I yeah. agree with you. Yeah, no, there's, you know, you mentioned the Highlander, you know, there's also the Honda Pilot. You know, you, there's a lot of cars in this mid-sized SUV class that are very utilitarian and are very practical, and that's all fine and good. The Sorento, though, feels a little more upscale. It just, it just 
you know, it just warms your heart a bit more. You know, it's a little more satisfying. Well, what's interesting is there's a lot of other vehicles that have better name recognition. Mm. I just want to point that out. Sure. I mean, people think about the segment, they think of the Pilot, they think of the Highlander. They don't think of the Sorento, and they're like, what, Sorento or Sedona? They don't know, I mean, you know, you got to mix it up. It's like, does it have the name recognition and just, Yeah, it know. sounds like an Italian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a brand of cheese. But yes. a lot of people may not even know about this vehicle, and this is just a really nice, nice family vehicle. Right, and remember, this is, um, um, based on overall score, which factors in reliability. Right. First year reliability has been terrific. Yes. So, uh, moving on the list, luxury SUV. Speaking of fantastic reliability, the Lexus RX. I mean, Lexus's reliability has just been great in using just, our new system. Y yeah. I mean, Lexus reliability has been great, which is the reason why the RX continues just to just dominate that market in terms mm -hmm. of luxury SUVs. I mean. It gives you like luxuriousness. It's it's very quiet and removed and soft. I mean, they didn't screw it up with the new redesign. That right, despite how it sporty. looks. Yeah. Despite how it, it looks, it that's, looks mean and that's aggressive. A, and that's a total disconnect. How it looks. Yeah. I mean, but forget the, the menacing look and the wrinkled <laughs> right. bodywork. It is a sheep in wolf's clothes. Right. I mean, this is a very <laughs> genteel kind of uh, sort of like mar marshmallow on wheels almost. <laughs> Yeah, handling so, is not yeah, this car's high point. It's not going to excite anyone in terms no. of handling or braking. No. But it, uh, it it's, a, it's a luxury commodity. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very nice car for those people that it's right for them. Yeah, that's a perfect way to put it, a luxury commodity. Uh, another vehicle that's become a commodity for, for some families, who those families who haven't defected to SUVs, is, is the minivan, and here is where, once again, using the new overall score factoring reliability did have an effect in which the Toyota Sienna has right. outpointed the Honda Odyssey. Yeah, and make no mistake, I mean, both the Odyssey and the Sienna are both, both very good choices, and, and when you look at reliability, I mean, the Odyssey has been okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the Odyssey, in terms of driving, it's dynamics, better than the Sienna. it's more a little more fun to drive. Right. But, but really, if you're a minivan shopper, what's really more important? Is it maybe a little bit better driving, you know, steering feel, or is it the fact that things not going to break for a longer, longer mm -hmm. time? So that kind of edged it out for the, uh, right. the Sienna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, slick powertrains, lots of room. The only uh, one with available all-wheel all drive. Exactly, the only yeah. game in town in terms of all-wheel drive. So, yeah, it, it's... Good. Yeah, and you're not going to go wrong with either one of them. Uh, perhaps a bit of a surprise is our top pick for pickup truck is the Ford F-150. Mm -hmm. Now, when we tested the F-150, uh, road test score is below the other two domestics, is below the Ram. We really like the Ram 1500. It's like driving a luxury car. Uh, we like the Chevy Silverado. It's a little bit, it feels a little smaller. It's a bit dynamically better. Uh, the F-150 is the most fuel efficient, but when you factor in reliability, that's where the F-150 pulls ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, if, it, if we're just looking at what that pickup truck is like to drive, you know, the F-150 wasn't on top. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, really, I need a pickup truck. I don't want it to be in the shop. I want the car to last. You know, and look at the F-150. I mean, look, it's getting, it gets decent fuel economy. Mm -hmm. The aluminum body is helping with the fuel efficiency. So it's crash test results are best in class. Crash test results, so really. It's very quiet. It's very quiet. Mm -hmm. it, it becomes the responsible choice. It becomes the better choice. Yeah, and Quick. It, and it's actually impressive that um, this design, which is, you know, the first year of this design, which has a lot new. I mean, there's some carryover powertrains, but there's a lot new here, especially that all aluminum body. Mm -hmm. structure. I mean, it, it, it had a reliable first year, and that's yep. a pretty impressive thing for Ford to do. Ford has a mixed history of launching new cars as being reliable, and yeah. they, they seem to do it this year. Yep. Yeah, I think they're get a little bit more mature, because I mean, some of the powertrains are carryover. Um, they didn't launch right away with like a new infotainment system. No, they carried over my Ford Touch which for a year. Now they've, some of the bugs now out. Now they've moved to Sync 3, mm -hmm. so that, that, that helps the car as well. Yep. Um, finally, the top pick parked behind us, the I, Mazda I, MX-5 I, Miata. I, I saving away. Yes, <laughs> saving the best for last. Um, saving perhaps the most fun for last. No. I mean, Miata's a terrific car. It, yeah, this is I a well-done redesign. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's such a pure uh, connection between uh, machine driver and road. It's, it's a very, uh, very honest, true, uh, to its roots kind of a car. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's quick. It handles beautifully. It, uh, yeah, it looks good. Uh, this time around as well. Uh, I think it looked fine last time around, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shifter is just a delight. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's 
it's a great roadster. I mean, it's, again, it's not a car you're going to take on a long trip, but no. for what it is, it's it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for what it is, I mean, exactly. I mean, like like Gabe says, I mean, the thing is that the light. I mean, it just you're so connected to this car, and the shifter is so great. But it's also you know, Consumer Reports can still call it a top pick. The things were going to be reliable. Right. The the reliability history of all the Miata has been very good. It's fuel efficient. Mm -hmm. I mean, this Skyactiv engine and it. I mean, it's just it's. It's nice to have a responsible toy. Yes, and that's exactly. What this is. exactly. This is a responsible right. toy. Right, and it always has been, right? right. I mean, it's yep. like it throws back to the 60s, you know, cars that leaked oil in your driveway, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been that There's car. none of the hassle factor here. Correct. So those are the 10 top picks. Now, years and years and years and years, um, the Toyota Prius has been a top pick, and you'll notice we haven't mentioned it on the list. Where's the Prius? Where's the Prius? Well, actually, the Prius isn't like on the cover of the magazine, actually. So <laughs> it just, we put it there and just get rid of it. No, the, the issue with the Prius is we have one right now. We just got it. It was not tested in time. Mm -hmm. So while we are predicting reliability and, and you know based on history, we're not going to predict the score yet until we actually drive the car and put a score to it. Um, that said, we've driven the car quite a bit, and we have. We can talk about the Prius. We can talk about the Prius, and, and it's better in every way. It is. Almost. Almost everywhere. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's a few quibbles, but almost everywhere. Yeah, it, it, it drives It drives nicer. It looks like the fuel efficiency. We haven't finished those testing, but it looks like it may actually improve the fuel efficiency mm -hmm. with making the car feel a little bit more solid. Um, you know, and, and to cut to the chase, I mean, we are highlighting the Prius in the, the April issue, and it's on the cover, and we'll be talking about online, too, just because the Prius is been pretty of amazing vehicle over the years. I mean, mm -hmm. since it was introduced, you know, what, decade and a half ago. Right. Mm -hmm. It's made a pretty big dent in terms of, you know, saving fuel and getting people in fuel efficient vehicles, probably a lot more so than electric vehicles and not everyone's to try that mm -hmm. way. Right. So, yeah, it's it's the perfect transportation pod. It's there's right. no car that that actually makes more sense for anyone who doesn't care about cars, but just getting from point A to point B, not to drive a Prius. But you know, the car doesn't require as many excuses anymore. I recently took it um, to Boston and back within a day. So, you know, like four and a half hours in the car, just droning up and back the highway. Mm -hmm. um, I would not look forward to, I would not relish doing that in the past Prius. This new car feels much more substantial, mm -hmm. feels much more planted on the road. Uh, road noise, it's not completely gone, but it's quite a bit less. Right. Uh, engine noise is quite a bit less. The interior is a lot mm -hmm. nicer. The old Prius had a pretty cheap interior for what they were selling it for. Uh, there are solid improvements here. Yes. You can quibble about the styling. There's yeah, a well, lot going on. Styling in the is in the eye of the beholder, yeah. but you can quibble about. I mean, the, they made the like you know the, the with every redesign, you know, it's lower and it's longer and it's wider. So, uh, so ease of access is uh, maybe a little reduced. Yeah, but ease of access and visibility, I think, right. took a step back. And rear visibility was never good in a Prius, and it's mm -hmm. not great now. But other than that, there's really not a lot to complain about in this car. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, look, we have a lot in the new overall score. We haven't put styling in it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, we may hold out on that. Yeah, I think we will. Don't hold your breath, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably for the best. So that's going to wrap it up for this Top Picks episode of Talking Cars. As always, we thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Thanks.